Hey, everybody. Neil Thompson from Teach the Geek here. I work with technical professionals so they can present more effectively, especially in front of non-technical audiences. And you can learn more about that at teachthegeek.com. Again, that's teachthegeek.com. Today, I want to provide some tips on how you can keep a non-technical audience's attention so that they can take in key information from your presentation. There's a Maya Angelou quote, and it's, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. If you're giving a presentation, especially in front of decision makers, and all they remember is how you made them feel, that's a problem. <laughs> they better remember what you did, and, they, and it's really helpful that they remember what you said, because a lot of the times they're using that information to make decisions. You don't want them making decisions just based on their feelings. You want to make decisions based on the facts that you provided in your presentation. So how can we make that happen? Firstly, and this seems rather obvious, but it's it's certainly not something a lot of people do, not, not all the time anyway, is, is actually look at the people you're speaking to. So often we'll have a whole lot of text on a slide and we'll read the slide. But obviously if we're reading, we can't look at the people we're reading to. There's only so many things we could do at once. When you look at people, they're way more likely to look at you. And if they're like if they're looking at you, they're way more likely to listen to what you have to say. So have less text on the slide so you're not as likely to read it. So if you're not going to be looking at the slides to read them, well, where else is there to look? Look at the people. If you are put off by the idea of looking people in the eyes, look at their eyebrows instead. It's less distracting, at least for me. Give it a shot. So there's number one. Look at people when you're talking to them. Number two, you want to possibly let them know what the key information is so they can really key in on that part of the presentation. Certainly, you're not going to be seeing anything that was useless to say in the presentation, but I suspect that there are certain things that are more important than others. Highlight those things, and you highlight those things by calling them out. So the people who are in the audience can take in, okay, this is the part of the presentation I really need to listen to. This is the priority from this presentation. So do that. And then the third tip is after the presentation, people may come up to you and say, great presentation. And if they do that, you'll say, thanks. What was your takeaway from it? So now you're going to get to see whether what you really want to convey is what people actually received. <laughs> because if there's a disconnect there, well, that's a problem. <laughs> That's a problem. So you, you know, to, for next time, well, I, I need to do a better job at conveying what I actually wanted to convey because these people took in something completely different. And you, you, you don't want that to be the case. Or perhaps in some instances, they took in something that you never considered. But maybe that's something to amplify in your next presentation. You just have to play that by ear. But you really want to be able to say what the input is, basically what you said and what the output was, what they took in. <laughs> And see if they match up. And then the, the fourth one, and this is the last one, is potentially you could provide a summary of the presentation. And I mentioned earlier that you should have a few, uh, at least minimal text on the slides so you're not tempted to read and the audience isn't tempted to read and no one's going to listen. So what you could possibly do is provide a summary of your presentation after the presentation. So in the event that maybe they weren't listening as well, maybe they didn't get that key information, Maybe after the presentation, what they took in was quite different than what you wanted them to. At least they could have a summary of the presentation for them to refer back to, to know what those key points were. I think that's really helpful. I, in fact, I was at a conference recently, and I've, I learned at this conference that the slides are available to the attendees after the conference, which is great unless you took my advice and had minimal text on the slides. <laughs> because now you have these slides, but there's not a whole lot of text on them. You might not even know what, what this means. The whole bunch of images on these slides and minimal text, how useful is that? But if you were to provide a summary of, your, of that presentation, I think that could be way more useful to the people to refer back to. So let's go over those tips once again. One, you want to look at people. You look at them, they're more likely to look at you. And they look at you, they're more likely to listen to you. Number two, you want to call out the key, the key points in a presentation. You do that, they're way more likely to take that in. Number three, you want to find out afterwards what did they take in? Did, is what they took in what you meant for them to take in? 
And then number four, you want to provide a, a summary of the presentation that they can refer back to at a later date in the event that they didn't get those key points during the presentation. Hopefully this has been helpful. Again, my name is Neil Thompson. I am the founder of Teach the Geek. I work with technical professionals so they can present more effectively, especially in front of non-technical audiences. And you can learn more about that at teachthegeek.com. Again, that's teachthegeek.com. Until next time, take care and stay safe.